All right, this is number 53, chapter 4. This is still projectile motion. In this case here, it says, a 35-gram steel ball is held by a ceiling-mounted electromagnetic electromagnet 3.5 meters above the floor. So what we have is an electromagnet here that's holding a steel ball at a height of 3.5 meters above the floor. This is the floor right here. Okay? And a compressed air cannon sits on the floor 4 meters to one side. So I'm going to go over here 4 meters and I have a compressed air cannon that's going to aim exactly at the ball. So it's aimed right at the ball. This is 4 meters here. Pointed directly under the ball. When a button is pressed, the ball drops and simultaneously cannon fires a 25 gram plastic ball. The two balls collide one meter above the slope floor. So what happens is, right when you shoot this, this starts to fall. So this falls like this, this shoots like this, and they hit here, they collide at exactly one meter above the floor. Okay. Now the cool thing about this experiment is it does not matter how, well to a point, as long as the velocity is high enough to get there, the ball to get there before this hits the ground, it will always hit the ball that falls when you aim it directly at it. Because they're both under the acceleration of gravity and so they're both falling the same amount. You're going, oh, but this one isn't falling, but it is from a, even when it has its initial velocity going up, it's still accelerating downward for the exact same amount of time that that one is. So no matter what, you always hit the ball. All right, so what we want to figure out is what is the initial velocity? Okay. All right, so we got a lot of stuff going on here. How are we going to figure this out? Well, we know the distance here, right? But we don't know the time, and we don't know the initial velocity. So we can't use that. This one, we know the distance. The whole thing is 3.5, but it falls 2.5 before it hits. But we also don't know the time. So we don't know the initial velocity there. We know the initial velocity when it starts up here, but we don't know the final velocity here. So that doesn't help us out at all either. So what's the easiest way to do this? Well, first of all, it would help us a lot if we knew this angle. And we can get that angle because that's just simple trick. So the tangent of theta is going to be equal to 3 and a half over 4. It's going to be the opposite side over the adjacent. Or theta is going to be equal to the inverse tangent of 3.5 over 4. And when you do that, you get the angle is equal to 41.18 degrees. Okay. Also, let's work on the y direction first. So sometimes when you aren't sure, you're like, I'm not even sure how to start. You just start solving for things, and then eventually it'll come together. So let's look at the y direction for this ball right here. When the y direction for this ball, we say, we know we can use this equation. But does that do us any good? Because we don't know the initial velocity, and we don't know the time. So we can't solve that equation. So that's not going to work. What about this equation? We know the initial y up here, the initial v0y for the ball here is equal to zero. They just drop it. They don't throw it. We know the distance it falls. We know this. We could solve for this. We could solve for the final velocity here. Like, how is that going to help us? Well, if we know that, then we can use this equation to solve for the time. And once we have the time, then we can solve for the rest of it. So what we're going to do is we're going to solve this one first. All right, so we're going to solve this one. 
vy squared is what we want. So we got vy squared is equal to, the initial velocity is zero, so this becomes minus two times 9.8, 9.8. And then we have the distance it falls here, right? So its initial starting point is 3.5, the final is one. So we have one minus 3.5. And no, you were worried because there was a negative here. Like, oh, I can't take square root of negative. It's all right. This is going to be negative, too, because the ball is going down. And so the negatives are going to cancel out. So we're going to get vy is equal to the square root of 2 times 9.8 times 2.5. You like this with negative? Yeah, I got rid of the negatives here. All right, when I do that, I get vy, or the velocity of the ball that's falling, at that time, is, let me calculate it here, square root of 2 times 9.8 times 2.5, and I get 7. So this is 7 meters per second. And then I'm going to plug it back into here to get the time. So Stay with me, I'm going over here. So Vy is equal to 7 is equal to V0Y is 0 minus 9.8 times T. T is going to be 7 over 9.8. And you get 0.714 seconds. Okay. That is exactly how long this fell, right? Okay, so now we know the time, we just have to figure out what the initial velocity here is. Well, the easiest thing now is to use the x direction, because we know exactly how far it went in range, right? And so what we're going to do is we're going to use x equals x naught plus v naught x t. We're going to solve it for v naught x. So v naught x is just going to be x over t, because that's equal to zero. And we know that that's just going to be 4 over 0.714. And when you do that, you get 4 divided by 0.714. We get that the velocity in the x direction is equal to 7, I'm sorry, 5.60 meters per second. Okay? So, remember here's our initial thing. We got V0. This is V0x. This is V0y over here. We know the angle. And I know V0x. I want to find out what V0 is. So, Stay with me, I'm going over here. I'm just going to use some trig here and say that, oh, if I know V0x, I want to find V0, I'm just going to use cosine. So the cosine of theta is just going to be V0x over V0, or cosine of theta times V0 is equal to V0x. But I don't really want that, I want to actually solve it for V0, so V0 is equal to V0x over cosine of theta or V0 is equal to V0x 5.60 divided by the cosine of my angle 41.18 degrees. All right, plug that into Mr. Calculator. And you get that the initial velocity is 7.44 meters per second. I think we actually have two sig figs, so it's 7.4 meters per second. And there you go. That was a trickier one, because you really had to think about where to start and get one step there. You see there's multiple steps here. I had to get this step to get the time. Once I had the time, I had to get this. Once I had this, I had to go this way to figure out what V naught is. So there are multiple steps, and that's the way, as the longer we go in the chapter and the longer in the semester, they're going to get more and more complicated like this.